I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Nina Haas, who co-stars in Tar as Sharon, the wife of the embattled title character Lydia Tar, uh, you know, a, a renowned uh, conductor. Uh, there's a lot of tension in their relationship, given some of Lydia's behavior and scandals. Uh, what do you think, you know, has kept Sharon so committed to her for so long as you were playing her and, and building this character? Well, I think Sharon's fascinated by Ty, by Lydia, as uh, first and foremost, I think how they how they met on which level they met was clearly through music. So Sharon in her own right is a very accomplished musician to get to the position of a concert master in one of the most world renowned uh, orchestras means she worked a lot. She's very disciplined, but also is a good politician. I always thought because as a concert master, you have to, be able to read the room to make sure everyone's calm everyone's happy as later on we learned she also had a big uh, um, important uh, role in getting Lydia at the position she's in so in a way I thought Sharon met her when Lydia was a guest conductor at her orchestra and just fell in love with the way this woman worked, the way she held herself, the way she, like you see in the first three scenes of the film, it's clearly someone who knows what she's talking about, who is very confident, who nevertheless, uh, Sharon sees her struggling side, her doubtful side also. And her, so I think on those, in those, on those levels, she really fell deeply in love <laughs> with Lydia. And that you then, as a couple, can, can work together in this most phenomenal way on these symphonies and, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that both clearly love um, only made things better. And then I always thought, well, then the pandemic came and they, I mean, it was so good that they decided to adopt a child, you know, so, um, and then the pandemic came and they didn't get to do what they, what they know each other as doing as a couple, making music. And I think something happened there. And then Lydia herself is in a different state. Um, she's working on her, how do you call this? Like the, the, the uh, you know, she's at a point in her career where everything, she's at the peak of everything and what follows then, you know, she, she's now working on her catalog and, and the Mahler, the fifth symphony is the last thing she needs for it. And, and then what, you know, so she's also challenging her environment and that's also Sharon, <laughs> you know, so all of that, it's a very unbalanced moment in their relationship, I thought. And, and Sharon doesn't say so much, so I, I, I was really, um, I had a great time thinking about how she watches everything, Sharon, you know, how she, because within these looks, you can tell if that's something Sharon knows already, that kind of behavior, or if it's something new, what her attitude towards Lydia's actions are and if she's surprised by them or not or so I uh, I focus a lot on on that being uh, uh, that that you kind of through the looks that Sharon has um, that you understand the history of this couple. Um, and you know, being a, a violinist and concert master, uh, you know, that's obviously a big part of of the character and the film. Uh, how much experience did you have with uh, violin music uh, before coming into this film? Well, I was asked to play a violinist twice before. I do play the piano, I, and I, uh, for a certain uh, at a certain point in my life, I was thinking of maybe going into the opera uh, singing world um, and then decided to, to follow the acting. But uh, so I'm, I'm not unfamiliar with the music, classical music world, but I really never learned to play the violin. But I found this phenomenal teacher, Marie Kogge, with whom I worked twice before, before Tar as well. And she really got me 
that I can play these pieces uh, of the Fifth Symphony from Mahler because she has such a good way of teaching you this instrument um, in a very intuitive way so that you lose all your fear. And I must say, I love the instrument. It, it, uh, it's kind of somewhat easy for me to hold it, to feel it, to use the bow to can it's something where I always thought why didn't I really learn this thing but um so I, I I really enjoyed working working on it and being able to to play these pieces also because I knew Kate and me we would be there in this real orchestra you know it's the Dresdner Philharmonics I mean they they know what they're doing and uh, I really wanted them also to forget that I'm not a musician you know, I just wanted to be their concert master for these two weeks th that we were shooting and uh, um, to, to be able to sink into this world and also to be then able to enjoy that process without being so fearful that the camera cannot see this or that or, you know, that I'm actually doing music with them. What Was it intimidating uh, at all to... Uh then shoot those scenes with the orchestra where you where you are the concert master and and lead violinist very much so <laughs> i know i was shaking and i i think kate, kate and myself we were both she said a wonderful thing though when she got up on this podium i was very glad that i wasn't the one having to do that because that is even more terrifying but um she said you know nina and i we're not musicians but we stand in front of you and we kind of pretend you know to do that as our life but you are not actors but you will act in this film so in a way let's 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 get together here and, and make it as, as as pleasant and joyful of a ride as as we all can and on that note it was really um a beautiful journey because they invited us in so beautifully and with such open arms and uh, were so helpful um, and also I, I got to sit next to the real concert master Wolfgang Hendrich and he just to watch him how he spoke to the orchestra how he spoke to his violin group and uh, the, 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 just yeah watching it absorbing it and then being able to to take some of that into the the characters world that that was really really helpful but it was at the same time pretty terrifying because they watch you <laughs> they do watch you were there a lot of uh, takes and coverage to kind of get those uh because there's still many moving parts in those uh, uh orchestra scenes and uh those rehearsal scenes yeah, the great thing was the way Todd shot these scenes uh, with Florian Hofmeister, the, the DOP. It felt very at ease because somehow the camera would just find its way through and find the moments, you know, that, that it wanted to catch. And the, so I, I truly, normally I am very aware where the camera is, but in this case, I, I was just always surprised. Oh, did we do that already? <laughs> this angle. That it was just a very um, yeah, easy, easy, easy uh, way of shooting within the, the these two weeks of being with the orchestra. Uh, and there's a, a memorable scene uh, where uh, Sharon confronts Lydia, and what's interesting is that she's more upset about. Lydia not confiding in her than even about the allegations themselves. Uh, did Was that like a really important scene for you in terms of unlocking this character? And, uh, you know, what did you think about that when you first read it? Yeah, that was the scene. I think it unraveled the whole character for me when I arrived at that scene, uh, when I first read the script, because um, and it was something we worked on quite a bit, Todd, Kate and I, um, because I thought it's, it's wonderful to have a female character who's in her own right, not innocent of this, you know, she's part of this Lydia Tar system and she carried it for quite a while and maybe pushed things with giving um, 
advice that maybe wasn't the right one all the time for Lydia. So, you know, it, it, I was just thinking about who is Sharon and what does she get out of this relationship as well. Um, and so I, I wanted Sharon to really have a strong point at the end of this relationship that she's, and I do feel, yeah, she is the most hurt that Lydia didn't respect her in that sense, that she didn't think Sharon could have done something to avoid the scandal. And I think Sharon is very sure that she could have, and that she could have protected the family and their relationship and their careers. Uh, and I think she, like she says, I, I, I can live with a lot of your traits, you know, and I, oversee a lot of things but the moment you take the trust away from me I, I I can't forget that I I won't be able to forget that because then I can trust you because you don't let me in and that made a lot of sense to me for someone who also has to protect her career so it informed a lot on who she is at the beginning already um, when I when I read this this scene and I, I yeah it's a very important one for Sharon I find um, and what was the experience like watching the finished film for the first time like was was it what you expected it would be or, or was it different uh, how how was that I think it was as surprising as it is to the audience I, I hope <laughs> because it was one thing reading it and then another thing working on it and then I knew because I had some phone calls with Todd uh, while he was editing with uh, the incredible editor Mona um, in Scotland. And he kind of said, the film is telling me what it wants to be now. And that means, of course, the story also slightly shifted and some scenes are not in it like it always happens. So that meant quite something to Lydia's character, but also to Sharon. And so the first time I saw it, I thought, oh, it's a different beast. It's a different thing. It's a... So I immediately wanted to see it again, because what I find personally so fascinating about Todd's work here is that he doesn't explain anything. He doesn't judge anything. The film doesn't tell me what I need to think about all the topics that it touches on. But it, it, it also, it doesn't close a room, it opens it up. So I want to discuss it. I want to talk about it. I want to think about it. And, um, and I knew that, but that it, you know, when I read the script and I was hopeful that that would happen, that it really opens up a conversation. But then when I saw this, the film for a third time, <laughs> uh, I really thought, oh yeah, that is, the, that is, that really, it works. It works. I, I see every single time I get, go out of this film and I take something else away from it. And I see a different nuance and it shifts. One time I don't understand Lydia in certain moments and then the next time I go, of course, it's this, it has to be <laughs> that way. She has to behave that way, you know? It's, so, um, and sometimes the focus is more on watching someone who is a creative, having to lead an institution an institution that's quite rigid in its ways. And does that ever go together? And are we maybe too harsh in our judgments? Then the next time it was a, it was a, a shift and you think, well, what do you do with all these social media and deep fake uh, things nowadays? And don't you have to question everything, <laughs> you know? And it's so all the, there, there's so much in it and every time you take something else out of it and that surprised me. I, I thought it, it might be possible, but it, uh, it's a surprising thing, this, this film. And uh, did it inspire you to, uh, does it make you want to explore music more or play music more uh, now that you've had this experience and, and have learned so much through it? Yes, but also listen to more <laughs> it's 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 some how i do i do listen also to classical music but working so intensively on this mala the fifth and to listen to it again and again and again you 
all of a sudden discover how rich all of this is, you know, and what is hidden. It's the same like the film in a way. You, it, it evokes so many emotions, especially this fifth symphony is you go through all states of emotions when you listen to it and you kind of feel why this man wrote it and for whom he wrote it and what state he was in. And uh, so it actually, and I hope that's what happens when, when the audience is watching this film, that you really want to explore the beauty of classical music and to see it maybe in a new modern way, because it still speaks to us. It's, uh, yeah, that's maybe what it did. And I went back to playing piano, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yes. Well, I want to congratulate you uh, on your performance in the film um, and, you know, as well as the film has been received uh, since it was released. Uh, so thank you. Uh, th thank you so much for talking to me about it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much.